By now you've likely seen the video or many images which have since gone viral of 24 year old Arna Kimai removing her mask while in an Uber, coughing, and assaulting 32 year old driver Subhakar Kodka. With the incident originally occurring on March 7th and quickly going viral on March 10th, leading to arrest warrants to be issued for two of the three passengers, we've now come to learn plenty more of the entire situation. Initially we just saw footage of the passengers, more specifically Arna and her friend Malaysia King, removing their masks, coughing, and even making comments and jokes about the severity of COVID-19. Then Arna took to Instagram defending her actions. Now she's facing up to 16 years in jail, and it seems there may be more to the story than initially thought. I'm going to tell you guys everything you need to know right now on IO. Smash that like button and let's get into it, folks. If you guys haven't seen some of our previous videos regarding this situation, feel free to check those out as well. Although I'm likely going to repeat some of the information previously covered, this video is more so focused on some of the new information that has since come to light. That being said, for context's sake, let's quickly go over the sequence of events that have led to where we currently stand. In a nutshell, three passengers got into Kotka car and upon realizing one of them didn't have a mask, he asked her to put one on. Once it was determined they didn't have one and he didn't have an extra mask to provide them, which the women seemed to be disappointed in, everything appeared to go downhill. Although Kotka offered to stop at a nearby gas station to purchase one, as we could see in the video, the women started to get angry and aggressive, with Arna specifically removing her mask, coughing in Kotka's direction, and attempting to grab his phone before he snags it back. King also removes her mask, claims she doesn't even have COVID, and at one point after leaving the vehicle, sprayed pepper spray spray into Kotka's car. According to the San Francisco's police department's press release dated March 14th, I quote, Miss King was arrested on an arrest warrant last Thursday, March 11th, 2021 for the following charges. Assault with a caustic chemical, assault and battery, conspiracy and violation of health and safety code. On March 14th, Arno would turn herself in and be released after posting a $75,000 bail after learning about the warrant for her arrest. The official press release reads, I quote, Miss Kimaya was booked into San Francisco County Jail tonight on an arrest warrant for charges of robbery, assault assault and battery, conspiracy, and violation of health and safety code. On March 18th, it was confirmed that she was charged with attempted robbery and assault on a hired transportation driver, which are both felonies. She has also been charged with misdemeanor battery on a transportation driver and violation of a COVID-19 health order. Now, aside from having to deal with the law, it seems the good people of the world also rallied and showed their support for the driver, Mr. Kotka, who had a GoFundMe campaign set up on his behalf, which has currently raised over $100,000. That being said, it seems there's more to this story than just a random act of aggression. Kutka has since spoken with numerous media outlets and even posted a video thanking all those who raised the money for him. In the video, he explains how he is going to put the money towards his parents' retirement, his son's education, and hopes the situation is something people all over the world can learn from. I quote him saying, I would like to take this moment to thank everybody who helped me get this information out to the public so that we could fight this injustice and inhumanity and racism. And with the rise of coverage documenting anti-Asian hate crimes internationally, some of the donors have expressed their support for Kotka, who feel the attack may not have been random and instead racially motivated. Kotka is using this as an opportunity to educate the world of the realities of the current climate of the world in general. He explained, I quote, it's not just the people in Ubers and Lyfts, it's also people who work in gas stations. People from all over the world reach out to tell me they've experienced and reported this type of behavior, but because of lack of evidence, it doesn't go anywhere and people learn to live with it. I hope this can serve as an example so we can raise enough awareness so that when someone is assaulted, hopefully they speak up and justice can be served. Recall in the series of events, Kotka mentioned how after after he pulled into a gas station and was waiting for the woman to purchase a mask, he had to deal with the two other passengers harassing him. I quote him saying, before the girl came back with her mask, I had to listen to taunts about how they could shoot me in the face and call their boyfriends and cousins on me. They talked about how small my testicles are because of my race. They called me a goofy ass n-word after every sentence. Once he realized the situation was escalating, he tried to end the ride. I quote him saying, I told him that the ride was over and to please get out of the car. They kept taunting me, telling me that I'm nobody and that they would stay in the car. It was three ladies versus one one guy who can't even verbally defend himself in English. Although the pepper spraying wasn't caught on camera, he explained after they got out, one of the passengers sprayed in the car's direction. I quote him saying, she emptied her pepper spray can in my car. I accidentally put my hand on my face and it started hurting. Both Lyft and Uber have since banned Arna from using their ride sharing services. And Uber has since given Kadka a $250 direct deposit to pay for cleaning fees, up from the initial $40 they offered, then 50, eventually hitting the $250 mark when the story went as big as it has gone. I quote him saying, the frustration was that I asked for the cleaning fee, and they gave me $20, then $40, but I knew the extent of the damage to my car. Those droplets are everywhere. It's not safe to drive. I explained that, and nothing was done. As of now, he's unsure when he'll return to work, explaining, I quote, I don't know how much time I'm going to take off to recover. But it seems the good people of the world have donated plenty of money to allow him to live comfortably for a little while. That being said, no amount of money will ever rectify this situation, at least in my eyes, but it's nice to know the amount of support that has been offered to the man. Now, as always, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. For now, let's do some comments 
Common replies from the video, top 10 most shocking rules royals are required to follow. Bacon Daddy TV said, this is why America doesn't need a monarch. I agree. Nicole Flanagan said, the queen banned garlic, it is never allowed in the palace and the family is never to eat it as well. I'll be honest, I was like, this can't be true. And I was gonna just stand here and be like, I didn't look it up. But I did look it up, and it is a fact. And you wanna know why? I thought it was just the queen just being like, I don't like garlic, get it out of here, because I have that power. No, it's actually because they talk to people very closely a lot, and they don't want any of their breaths to smell like garlic. You guys ever eaten garlic? It stays in your breath. Sometimes it stays in your breath for like a day or two if it's really strong. Or maybe I just don't brush my teeth often enough. But that's besides the point. It really stays on your breath, and then, you know, if you're talking close to people, you don't wanna have a royal conversation, be a little stinky, because that's some royal stinkness, you know? All right, guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. Bye. <laughs>